Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on SABC3. Now, if you haven't heard yet, shockwaves reverberated across the country yesterday after news broke that a 15-year-old South African girl was pulled off a flight on Sunday moments before trying to leave the country to join Islamic State. And this was a news broken by the state security officials. Now, we've got uh, with us on the line Crime Line's Yusuf Abramji, who was notified of the girl's disappearance uh, to help us gain a better understanding of exactly how this happened. Yusuf, thank you very much for taking our call. Good morning. Thank you very much. Now, what led you to believe that this young girl was leaving the country specifically to join ISIS? Well, I received a call on Sunday morning from uh, family members of the 15-year-old missing Cape Town girl. And during the discussion, it emerged that there was suspicion that she may be involved with ISIS. Uh, some documents were allegedly found in her room. And that obviously sparked uh, the urgency. And that is why the um, Western Cape Provincial Police Commissioner, General Anna Lemur, together with state security, moved very, very swiftly in trying to locate the girl. And uh, a few hours later, as we know, she was found uh, on, bound, on, a, on a British Airways bound flight for Johannesburg at Cape Town International Airport mm -hmm. and then taken in for questioning and later released uh, in the custody of her parents. Obviously, incidents of this, of this nature does spark uh, instant reaction. And that is why I think I need to praise the parents, the family, for taking the swift action. Very often parents conceal the fact uh, or some of the circumstances surrounding the disappearance of their children. And had the parents not acted as swiftly as they did, mm -hmm. uh, we could have possibly and sadly found this girl in a, in a conflict area. Yeah. And I'm not sure, have you, have you been able to speak to the parents subsequent to that incident? And you were talking about the documents as well. Was there any other further evidence that prompted you to think that uh, her joining um, ISIS was uh, an imminent occurrence? Well, the Minister of State Security has confirmed it. Uh, in a statement yesterday, the ministry indicated that investigations are ongoing. Mm -hmm. And these investigations will take time. Remember, we're talking here of social media, we're talking of an internet, we're talking of tickets that were booked possibly to the Middle East. Mm -hmm. and, and these investigations could, be, could take a few days, if not a few weeks. But the, the, the many questions that need to be answered include as to whether or not she was aided and abetted by anyone locally, mm -hmm. who paid for the tickets, how did she manage to board a flight being a minor, and so on. Yes. So I would suspect that we, 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 we will get some of these answers, not immediately, but perhaps over the next few weeks. And I think we must allow the authorities the space to complete the investigation. And can you give us a bit more details on what has become of the young girl since she was apprehended? As far as we know, she's safely re reunited with her family. They're back in their Cape Town home. Um, I, I would assume that the uh, family is really talking to her. There must be some counselling happening. And I think this particular incident, again, raises the question about safety of our children. Yes. How, how much do we know about their, um, uh, their activities on social media platforms? How much do we as parents take charge uh, of what they are doing? And very importantly, if the allegations are true that uh, she was involved or ISIS was trying to recruit her, mm -hmm. what role do communities play in trying to stop this type of recruitment? Um, because there are a lot of allegations that other South Africans maybe or have left South Africa, maybe in the process of leaving South Africa. And if that is true, a lot of education needs to be done, especially with our young people. Indeed, and I think that's where Martin Iri can weigh in on that. He's from the Institute of Security <coughs> Studies. Martin, take us through how this young girl might have been recu recruited. Was it a, a case of online propaganda, face-to-face -face meetings? How does this kind of thing happen? Uh, yeah, as uh, you have uh, said, um, there are a number of uh, ways um, for recruiting uh, young girls or anyone else into a terrorist groups uh, such as uh, IS. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I think sometimes in November there was the independent media which actually discovered an online document. Uh, that uh, online document detailed the approach mm -hmm. that young girls who want or young people who want to join IS, the approach that they could take to join. And one of them was the use of social media. So through social media, you get contact with people, and then you, you, you show interest. Mm -hmm. From that interest, uh, you, you show commitment. And once they know that you are committed and that you cannot betray, you are then recruited. And then they ask you 
to buy your own ticket, which is, again, proof of that commitment. Mm -hmm. And once you buy your own ticket to fly, and then they tell you, look, once you are with us, we will take care of you. We will provide for all your needs, and you will become one of us. Uh, now, the social media <coughs> network, excuse me, the social media network operates, it's either Twitter, it's either Facebook, mm -hmm. and sometimes you might even have Skype. Okay. So, through Twitter, I think it's the best for them because, uh, you know, you can hide your identity, you can hide a uh, lot of things. Uh, so that you receive messages. Yeah. What happens is that once you are contacted, you might receive a message mm -hmm. about, uh, take for example, it could be on any Islamic topic. Yes. And then you express your view. From that view, they will know where you are leaning at mm -hmm. and the kind of person you are. But right. still, they will have to engage you in order to confirm whether you are that kind of person that they can trust. Indeed. Martin, thank you very much for that information. Yusuf, thank you very much for the swift action that you've taken in helping to, I guess, diffuse the situation before it went any further. And then we do hope thank that parents out there are taking a clear message from this that, uh, of course, action must be taken. It's time for parents, for families to engage in conversation to find out what our children are doing right there. And we hope that uh, the 15-year-old girl and her family are able to move on in a positive direction from this event. But let's right now find out what else is coming up on your Feel Good Breakfast show with Graham.